Hey, prime my body, get up, get going, get your feet up, and bring this amazing human being to the stage. Give it up for former cover brother, Victor Mishamashi! site and there's some things that, that are on there and I'm going to let Austin be the, uh, the question asker ask real quick. Very nice of you to do that, right? So, Chrissy's going to throw you some softballs, lob it up to you real quick and just a couple explanations for a few things because sure. these guys need to understand what you've already built, what we don't need to impede on, what, what you've already done. Uh, we're, here, we're here to take the value that you've given us and go do something big, but you've also built a company that's there with a lot of people that you're helping. Uh, around the country and around the world. So it's just one, they, they need to understand a few things right. so go to their site and do that. Awesome time. Right. First question, by the way, welcome to the Prime My Body Hot Seat. You Thank you. Burn, I promise. <laughs> um, anyways, first question, you discussed this yesterday, but I think it's important we hit back on it. Quicksilver has a hemp oil, Prime My Body has a hemp oil. Can you talk again the difference between those? I know ours is actually cheaper per milliliter, uh, but then in addition to that, the difference in milligrams as well. Yeah, we, we started out just uh, giving you the same product that we have, uh, which at the time was 12 milligrams per dose. A dose is two milliliters. So it was six milligrams per milliliter load of CBD and associated phytocannabinoid dials. Uh, then, you know, as you guys took off, it was obvious that there was a need for differentiation. You set a higher price point, uh, and it works into the whole compensation package. And uh, so there was a lot of pressure like, hey, you know, it's a little more expensive to do Prime My Body versus Quicksilver. And, uh, and so we had to solve that. Uh, I don't want to change how I do things. I, I sell a lot of product to doctors that sell them. Uh, sell those products to patients that are in great need. And this was a huge, uh, the, the product itself is a huge benefit to our product line. We do a lot of detoxification, people with a lot of neurological stress, and it really helped everything. And so I didn't want to get rid of that, but I wanted to make everything work out and be in proper alignment. And so we worked out the formulation to take the dosage up or the concentration up even higher. So we got it to eight milligrams per milliliter, or in a four pump dose, 16 milligrams. So at that level, when you're selling bottles at $120, there's a 400 milligrams of total phytocannabinoid dials in the bottle, and that'll price out at 30 cents per milligram. Whereas Quicksilver's original line with 300 milligrams, at $95, prices out at 31.6 milligrams. So you no longer have to deal with that competition where people will try to search us out and buy directly from us. Now, that being said, you're selling 10 times more than we are, so don't cry. <laughs> Thank you, by the way. Thank you. You're welcome. We appreciate that. Uh, real, real quick, um, you're going to go, Quicksilver is not customer service for you to hit them. As a matter of fact, they'll just hit delete if it's from a Prime My Body affiliate asking questions. So his staff is not prepared to answer things that you may have questions about. He is gonna have more content on there, more videos, more stuff for you to get a hold of, but he's not gonna be doing people calling on it, you know, I'm Prime My Body, can you explain this to me? And, and his, his staff's not here to do that. <laughs> so bury my staff. staff. So I wanna make, sure, make sure they understand that. It's, yeah, because if not, uh, you will be excommunicated from the family. <laughs> Go ahead, Austin. Um, 
can you speak to, I mean, obviously there's a difference in how much phytocannabinoid dial is in ours, but why is that important? Like, does that mean I need to take less? Like, what is Yeah, that? yeah, it really does. Uh, you're going to get more effect from each pump, and it's actually, it's been pretty dramatic. Uh, getting more cannabinoids in a smaller volume is a big deal because you're trying to get absorption across the surface area of your mouth and down through your upper GI tract. So the less volume is touching that surface area, the better. So the more concentrated one seems to pack, even for the same amount of cannabinoids, seems to pack a bigger dose uh, or a bigger punch. So now three pumps will have the same amount that four did before. Plus, because it's more concentrated over a, uh, a smaller volume, greater surface area, you're gonna have a more punchy, faster uptake. Amen. Like so, so when people go to your Quicksilver site, um, you do some white labeling, but you're not gonna be white labeling anything that you make for Prime My Body. No, we, we make products for other companies. Uh, we don't do much of the white label, which would be like 300 bottle runs. Okay. And we never do those like small 24 bottle runs. Uh, but we'll keep anything that we do do, some of the clinics uh, that we work with, we're looking to do some, some projects with things like Blue uh, but we'll keep the heck out of that. Okay, perfect. But just a question, because some people yeah. are asking. And certainly the problem my body doctors come. Yeah, so you got the best of the best of the best that he makes, period. And, and it's ours, it's yours. Give that a big round of applause, ladies and gentlemen, that's you. Speak for myself and everybody. I mean, we're really good at taking this in, but regurgitating it's probably not everyone's strength in here. <laughs> Is it safe to say that we're going to have a lot of great video content from Dr. Christopher Shea on our website? 100. percent We'll do we'll do a bunch of micro videos for you. Cover all these things. We're going to go a little. We're going to reiterate some stuff today and really really take it home. My COO Peter Garrett said, "Look, man, you got to give them features and benefits." And so we got some more, more simple approaches to looking at things, and then we'll do uh, micro videos around uh, the more in-depth uh, aspects of the delivery system, of what it means to the brain and brain stability, and you'll be able to circulate those around and use those. Yeah. Oh, no. There was one other question. This is the last one we have for you, or at least for me. I don't know if you have another one. Okay. Uh, on on, uh, on, on uh, the Quicksilver site, uh, there's an affiliate program, but that's for doctors, and it's nothing, anything like what we're doing, correct? Yeah, no, that's a fulfillment, uh, that's a fulfillment program for doctors. Uh, the, the way traditionally it was is doctors would buy inventory, stock it, and then resell to the patients. And uh, now doctors are trying to streamline more, have less inventory, have less overhead, and so they just call in orders for their patients. And, uh, and we fulfill those, and they get less of a cut of it then. Uh, we do, for some of our thought leaders or blog leaders, there's some affiliate links that they have. But, you know, affiliate, <laughs> affiliate used to mean something different. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you guys took the word. <laughs> and uh, so we're gonna switch that to calling it a partner program, and some of our bloggers will use that for links to our retail site. Okay, cool. Thank you. And Appreciate last you. question. This is, uh, you know, no pressure on this question. <laughs> I'm asking for everyone in here. If just occasionally we had a conference call, like a Tuesday, Thursday call, like an overview call, kind of like last night's meeting, but 20 minutes, 25 minutes, and Dr. Christopher Shane was a guest on that call. Yeah. Yeah. out to hear Dr. Shea break our own. Yes! And, and the next question is, okay, would you okay. come out and make that happen for us? What's that? And the next question is, would you show up and make that happen for us? I'll make that happen. All right. Tuesday. <laughs> so, uh, so Tuesday at 8 o'clock, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Dr. Chris, hey, appreciate Shane, everybody.
We're back at it. We're going to go back and uh, reiterate some stuff that we looked at yesterday so we get some of that stuff clear. And, uh, and then we're going to dive a little deeper into the science. <laughs> don't invite a chemist if you don't want to talk about some chemistry. And uh, like we said, we'll do some micro videos on a lot of these subjects. Tidy them up, make them small so that you can really come to understand them. Or even if you don't understand them, let somebody else watch them, it'll look good. They'll think it's good. They got this funky contraption up here for me. I'm not sure if it does anything. It was so I could draw things, but I don't think I'm gonna draw things. We can, you know, and JT never came through with a laser. <laughs> He's afraid to show me his next one. And your slide mover doesn't work, gentlemen. What's that? I don't need a pointer, I need a slide changer that works. Not working. Okay, while they're doing that, we'll start in the talking. So we, we talked yesterday about the delivery system. We talked about what that means. And, you know, at some point I realized that, you know, it may sound really good, but thank you. What the ultimate end goal of it may not always come across real obviously. And so when we talk about features and benefits, the most important thing to remember about that uptake, we showed you that curve where doing this kind of product gave five to six fold increase in absorption over a regular product. That means you need five to six fold less to get the same effects. And even then, there'll be effects that you get from this delivery that you don't get from other systems because of the big peak dose that goes into the blood. When we talked about receptors, and we'll talk about those again, and we talked about gene transcription, turning on certain genes, turning on different mechanisms in the body. And those are turned on when you go through a transient peak dose. And so the absorption that's happening right inside the buccal cavity, beginning there and then continuing after you swallow, is giving you a high peak dose. That's why we have that palpable feeling, because whoosh, a whole bunch goes in right at once. And there's a lot of things that that does for you. So let's go back and clarify again. Yeah, we call this an oil, but you go to like Charlotte's Web and that's an oil too. So ours isn't really an oil, it's a nano emulsification of oil. So we have, in those, remember, those lipid nanoparticles. It's a little oil droplet surrounded by phospholipids. Those little droplets are dispersed into this matrix of water, glycerin, and ethanol. And it's those little packages that are going to diffuse through the mucous membranes and find the capillaries that are right under the uh, right under the surface of your skin in your mouth and find the capillaries that are in your stomach and eventually the last be bits going into the GI tract. So if we compare this to another product, remember, look on top. Now I drew these little CBD molecules into the particle. So there's the oil particle hosting the CBD molecules. And those are dispersed in that water, ethylene, uh, water, glycerin, ethanol matrix. If you look at a product like Charlotte's Web, which is a very solid product, that is a totally different approach. And they don't have these unique aspects of absorption that are happening with the nano emulsification project, uh, process. So there on the right, you see just the CBDs dispersed in, instead of water, they're dispersed in MCT oil, a carrier oil. So when you swallow those into your GI tract, 
you have to emulsify that oil with bile and then absorb that. Now absorption for CBD in this kind of a format, in a carrier oil or in a capsule, is only six to 10%. But when you make those special little vehicles, those lipid nanoparticles, now we're getting five to six fold increase in bioavailability. So if you take the same milligram amount, you're gonna get five to six fold more in your blood. That's a big, big deal. A lot of the ways that people like to use CBD for managing different conditions involve taking over 100 milligrams a day, 100 to 200 milligrams a day. So now to get those same levels, you cut that down to 20 to 40 milligrams a day. That's the essential difference. This was that data on the bottom is uh, some published pharmaceutical data on uptake of a 10 milligram dose. And then in the top red, that's five milligrams of the nano emulsion. So you get more in and you get it in faster. Some of the newer data we're getting on the smaller particle systems that we have, have really high amounts in the blood in 10 minutes. It's measurable difference in two minutes. That's why if you're sensitive to feeling it, you're gonna feel it almost right away. Just a couple of minutes in, you're like, whoa, that's really changing things. That's changing my life. I like that. The happy face comes on and the happy face grows over 10, 20, 30, 40 minutes, peaking around 40, 50 minutes, and then starting to flatten out and then drift back down. So the immediacy there and the high net uptake are your main drivers. So now just to simplify for this for selling propositions for you, Peter Garrick thankfully made me the features and benefits slide. I don't think that way. <laughs> I talk about it, but I don't like put it into a slide. That's why we have MBAs. Yeah. <laughs> this is the Harvard MBA slide. So feature, greater uptake, Benefit, more efficient. You don't need as much to get very strong results in the body. Faster effect, what does that do? It gives you that more palpable feel where you're like, wow, this is really working for me. And it gives you that immediacy. If your head's really jangled and you're feeling all wound up and you're anxious, boom, immediately bring things down. You know, we have all kinds of testimonials of the immediacy when people are having uh, seizure type events that can go in so fast and take care of things so quickly. But it also sets it up when we get into more advanced work, uh, when we start making other products for you and, and build protocols. In Quicksilver, we do protocols around detoxification and you're able to stage things because you get your effects so quick. You're not waiting for a capsule to dissolve over three, four hours. You get your effect immediately and you can do things in a sequence. One of the things that people are experiencing with the hemp oil is detoxification reactions. Yeah. Right? People yeah. having some of those? Yeah. Because the hemp oil is a great detoxification upregulator. And we're going to talk about that later. We're going to talk about the gene sets that are invoked that turn up detoxification. But that happens very quickly, doesn't it? It's not like, oh, I'm getting a detox reaction four hours later. It's like you take it and it's like, whoa. And the reason for that is the way the liver works. And it's usually, the, if you're having symptoms, one of the easiest ways to get around that is the use of a bitters formula. Like we have cocktail bitters, like Angostura, even that works. But you can go and you can get better herbal tincture bitters. 
And what happens is the liver has got a couple of doors out of it. And the primary door for toxins, when you wind up detoxification, as we're doing with this product, the primary door is to go out through the bile, through the gallbladder, and into the GI tract. But a lot of people end up with a sludgy, blocked, blocked gallbladder. And what happens then is that CBD comes in through circulation, winds up those detoxification processes, it tries to go through the bile ducts, but bang, it gets stopped. There's another door out of the liver that goes into the blood. So you take these stored toxins in your liver, you turn the charcoal and clay and various special things to mop all that up. And that eliminates the detox reactions. So I think that's where we're going next. And with immediacy, you can stage things like that. You can do it a couple of times a day. All right, so what else do we have in our features and benefits? We have controlled dosing. Bang, every time you hit it, four milligrams. Bang, four milligrams. Pump, pump, pass. Pump, pump, pass. How many milligrams was pump, pump, pass? Eight. Eight, I love it. We've got math under control now. Feature works with the body, inducing the body's own mechanisms. We're gonna to talk today about how it turns up intracellular antioxidant production, turns up glutathione system processes in the body. So now you've got something that's natural and safe effects that the body, you're just triggering it to use some of its mechanisms. Now you've got a super innovative technology, not a poser technology, do we have to name names? <laughs> name it. Oh. All right. Any name you give me is good. They're all posted. All right. You got innovative technology. You've got product differentiation from that. You can come and you say, look at this. Look at the clarity. You know it's in this certain size range. You know you're going to have high uptake. You know you have stability. We test this stuff up and down. We test it coming in. We know it's clean. We test it going out. We know the product's in there, unlike a lot of the stuff that's on the market. Oh, it says 100 milligrams. There's only 20. You have that product differentiation of having that super high technological difference. And finally, you're in a cutting edge category. Everybody wants to be in this category. And so it's going to be easy to sell. Everybody wants this. And you got it. All right. My slide changer doesn't work again. There we go. It was just, it was freaked out. It was so exciting. All right, we're just gonna run back over a couple things. The phytocannabinoid diols. Remember, there's a sum of four different compounds that have two hydroxides. That makes it a diol. The sum of them are the phytocannabinoid diols. And these all work together the main one, the main duck is cannabidiol, CBD, and then there's cannabidivarin, good luck saying that a lot, <laughs> cannabidivarin, and around 8%, you've got cannabidiolic acid, that's uh, the way the CBD comes from the plant, uh, this has some unique effects, but it's not as good at the receptors as CBD, and then you have cannabidiol. And as I said yesterday, we've tested this at under 0.002% THC. So we have a THC-free product. However, some people have seen that when you buy over-the-counter THC tests, you'll get a false positive result on a urinary test. This is because of a compound that is in the mix called tetrahydrocannabidiverin. Say that one. 
There you go. Tetrahydro cannabivari. I know my cannabis. I even put it in it. In it. <laughs> All right. So that is different. On the bottom is delta 9 THC. On the top is the, tetra, the THCV. So you'll see on the right, if you look down at the delta 9, there's a five that zigzag there. Each of the points of the zigzag is a carbon. So that's a five carbon chain. And the other part with the hexagons, we call the head group. You see the head group is the same for THC and THCV, but the tail is a different size. And because of this, the tail does not hit the CB1 receptor. It is not psychoactive. It acts a little bit more like CBD. It's more of a modulator of effect modulator of the receptors. But with the cheap over-the-counter urine tests, they're not looking at the length of the tail, they're looking only at the head group. And so they look the same in the metabolite that comes out of the urine. There's a car what's called a carboxyl group is stuck onto these, and you pee that out. And it looks the same to the strips with the little, you know, with the markers on them. And if you go to a place that does drug monitoring, they'll use one of those as a first pass. And if it's positive, then they send it into the lab and they do what's called chromatography, which is done in labs and it separates different compounds out according to their sizes, essentially. And there, the THCV separates away from the THC metabolite. So that's the reason for this. And we're doing a lot of research around it now uh, and make sure we know what all the different labs are using for analytical technology so that we know that none of the real labs will come in with a false positive. But that was the reason for that. The OTC stuff. What about the blood? Blood? Blood test. Oh, if you had a blood test, they would do it by chromatography, they would separate them out, and they would know exactly where Delta 9 falls. Uh, and we've done a lot of these with uh, University of uh, Colorado, uh, CU Children's Hospital. They run, they run blood samples for us, and they give us the chromatograms, and they, they quantify every single one of the different things in there. And uh, Delta 9 is Delta 9. It shows that it's not there. Okay. What's that? Uh, it should be the same thing as a blood because you can't do the strips for the hair test. And so they should dissolve the hair and run it through chromatography. But we'll, we'll query more of the labs and see how they, done, how they do hair. We we're focused on blood and urine. All right, so let's talk about what this stuff does in the body. Into the chemistry. So, uh, one of the things that I think is the most important thing for CBD in the body, and this is when I lecture in functional medicine groups and integrative medicine groups, this is the thing that I talk about the most. And I talked about it last night in uh, a less scientific way, talking about what it means for us to control neuroinflammation and stabilize our autonomic nervous system. And this is big. In functional medicine, we're dealing with a lot of people who are very ill, uh, often mold toxicity, Lyme disease, uh, various uh, plastics toxicities, metal toxicities, all of these go and they cause a process called neuroinflammation in the brain. And we're gonna dive into that more so that you at least see it. And we'll have micro videos for you on it. But I want you to see what the players are. We touched on it yesterday, because it's really important. This is happening to a lot of people. And neuroinflammation starts with uh, activation of what they, we call the NMDA receptor or the glutamate receptor. And it starts, it's putting you into a fight or flight mode. And it starts with feelings of anxiety and it moves into brain fog. 
And you know, anybody who goes into, who's mold sensitive and you go into a moldy building, immediately you get that fogginess. Those are inflammatory cytokines that are affecting your brain and it's a process of neuroinflammation. And CBD is amazing for this. In fact, my first use of this product extensively was when I was in Florida and uh, I was visiting uh, a famous client there and he was going through a detox and he was having a lot of brain fog. Now, I noticed everybody seemed to have brain fog in Florida and you can say that's all the time. And you can say it's for a lot of different reasons, but this was the rainy season. Everything was really moldy and they had a toxic algal bloom going on. Just two weeks later, I read in the papers that, in, uh, that they had a massive algal bloom going down, on down there. And if you live in any of those places, if you live in the Chesapeake Bay, if you live in anywhere along the intercoastal waterway down into Florida, there, whenever there are algal blooms, uh, there's a lot of times there are toxic algal blooms and they release toxins that go into the air and they cause this kind of neuroinflammation. So he had neuroinflammation, some people call it brain pain. And so uh, I gave him CBD right away and it just, he just, he went from being like this, just slipped down in his chair, everything was all right. <laughs> And so I go from there down to A4M. This is the anti-aging medicine meeting. And I go to A4M and we have a booth there and I'm seeing all of my doctor friends and they're walking up to me and like, who are you? I'm like, hello, anybody home? Open your mouth, boom, boom, boom. And then they're like, ew. Chris, how'd you get here? Right. That was creepy, but let me do it again. <laughs> wow, it's all of them. And we were at a famous, well, it's infamous hotel to us called The Diplomat. And uh, it's cool because it's got these balconies that look out on the ocean. But they had closed all the damn balconies because they had to fix it because of what? Water damage, which meant they closed all the mold in. And there was just one big hotel of mold. And everybody goes, well, here you <laughs> And pop, pop, pass, pop, pop, pass, pop, pop, pass, and everybody's clear. Are you getting mileage out of this or what? We've been looking for like, what do we say about this? Pop, pop, pass, man, that's it. So it was just, that was like the, the coming out of, of the glory of CBD and what it does and how it stops that fog that's going on in the brain. And as I looked deeper into it, I saw, yeah, it's working at that fight or flight receptor, calming that down. There's an immune uh, cell in the brain that gets all fired up and gets all rowdy and starts making trouble. And it calms that one down too. And it brings up all the glutathione genes and it tamps down the inflammatory genes and it sets the stage for success in the brain. So we talked yesterday about the cannabinoid receptors. Remember, CB1 is in the central nervous system. That's the one that's associated with THC in the heart. CB2 is peripherally and in the central nervous system associated with immune cells. And it, ex it exerts very strong control over inflammatory processes. Now this is really important. It's not, we like to get so binary as humans, it's black, it's white, it's this or that, it's Democrat, Republican. Both are wrong. No, sorry. But it's the same thing with inflammation, anti-inflammation. We like to say, inflammation's bad, we need anti-inflammation. But if you have all anti-inflammation, you're gonna have trouble. The right balance of things. And CB2 receptors and CBD and its effect on them is helping control the right balance. 
Now we notice it when things are out of hand and we have inflammatory processes ca causing pain or neuroinflammation because it brings them down. It makes us feel better. But it is not always shutting down inflammation like that's a bad, 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 bad thing. It's creating the right balance. Remember our endogenous cannabinoids. Anandamide, the bliss molecule associated with chocolate, meditation, runner's high, two arachidonoglycerol. You can remember that from right after you were born. It was the first time you got high from your mother. <laughs> we have good memories. And remember, CBD enhancing endocannabinoid tone. That's such a great word. It's a great phrase, endocannabinoid tone. It's helping build up the synthesis of 2-AG. It's helping limit the destruction of anandamide, creating a higher pool of these molecules that are doing all of this endocannabinoid system signaling. Signaling is a good word to remember. Communication, enhancing communication in the different systems, the neurological, the the receptors in the, in, in the brain, the hormone system, the immune system, getting it all to communicate together. So this is why we do not need THC to activate CBD. It does this all on its own and with the help of your endocannabinoids. Number two reason, these gene sets we're gonna talk about, bringing up detoxification and antioxidant genes, turning down runaway inflammatory genes. Look at this one. Turning up bone fracture healing. Big, big deal. JT, where's your wife? Give her some CBD. And we really like to have people take that with a combination of vitamin D3 and K2. K2 is a beautiful compound that enhances movement of calcium back into the bones. There's a derailing of calcium metabolism that happens over time where calcium goes into the soft tissues, goes into your vasculature, goes, goes into your joints and causes problems. K2 moves that back into the bones. So think about when you're trying to enhance bone growth, using the hemp oil with vitamin D3 and vitamin K2. All right, now we're, the fourth reason is back to this neuroinflammation and it's stabilization of these two actors in the neuroinflammatory process. I think we have. So we're gonna go into who those two actors are. And so brain on fire. Now, remember when monosodium glutamate was an issue? It was. And they called those excitotoxins because they wind up the glutamate receptors and that's winding up fight or flight and it's making, it was making kids all wild and crazy. And so they call these excitotoxins. So now in the process of neuroinflammation, there's certain triggers that start it, like the mold toxins, uh, buildup of amyloid plaque in the brain, uh, glyphosate, mercury exposure, Lyme disease, and a big one that we're gonna talk about a lot here is endotoxin. Endo means inside. Endotoxin is also called lipopolysaccharide, and they're little parts of bacteria that you will be getting either from your intestines or from infections that you have, active infections, like a urinary tract infection does a lot of that. Uh, chronic jaw infections and sinus infections will do this, different biofilm infections through your body. So we're getting a little bit more advanced in our thinking here, but one of the biggest things in functional medicine now, looking at the problems that people have it's called leaky gut. Who's, who's heard of leaky gut? Oh, this is great. So what's the problem with leaky gut? It sucks, that's the problem with leaky gut. 
It sure does, but you may not know why it sucks, and we're gonna go deep into what makes it suck. And leaky gut is when you have uh, chronic inflammation in the GI tract that's opening up what are called tight junctions between the cells in the epithelia, the lining of your GI tract. So these are all supposed to be glued together nicely, and you're supposed to limit what gets from the GI tract into the circulation. But when you get leaky gut, you get this big inflammatory reaction and it gets all loose. And then you start absorbing uh, not completely digested proteins, but big to the inflammatory scene here is you start absorbing little parts of bacteria, not whole bacteria, but little parts of the cell wall of, or the cell membrane of the bacteria. All right, now the problem is, in the body, you have immune cells that are exquisitely sensitive to the presence of these because it tells them that you have a systemic infection. It tells them there's some sort of sepsis coming on. And they sound the alarm to kill the little bastards. <laughs> but the little bastards aren't even there. Little parts of them are. Little bastard parts. <laughs> winding up your immune system, it's getting all pissed off, and it starts sending pro-inflammatory stuff all over the place to kill them. And in the brain, the blue thing is called an astrocyte, and it, when that inflammation starts happening, you start getting leakiness to the blood-brain barrier. So it's bad enough you had a leaky gut, now you're getting a leaky blood-brain barrier. And what does that mean? You're gonna get all kinds of crap all into your brain. You're gonna get more stuff than you're supposed to in the brain. And one of them is that actor up there, the astrocyte, and it goes into the brain and it tells that red cell, that's called the microglia, that man, we are really in danger here, you better pull out the big guns. And so it changes size, it moves to that amoeba-like form, and it starts secreting all these things called pro-inflammatory cytokines. So TNF-alpha, IL-1, it secretes, uh, it starts making peroxynitrite, which is a free radical. And so it stirs up all this inflammation in the brain and causes even more blood-brain barrier permeability. And now you start getting all kinds of stuff into your brain. And now if it was something like mold that triggered this, you're getting a lot of mold toxins in there. You're getting a lot of mercury up into your brain. Isn't that right, Lori Carlino? All right, so now there's this downward spiral where on the left now, that was the red cell from the previous one, it's called the microglia. It starts secreting all these pro-inflammatory cytokines and they hit the neuron at the glutamate receptor. Remember the glutamate receptor? That's the fight or flight side. And they start winding that up. And that gets all pissed off and it starts throwing insults back at the microglia. You know that it is time for political jokes, right? Right. <laughs> I still haven't figured out which one's a Democrat and which one's a Republican, but this is the last decade. It's a vicious cycle. You suck, you suck, you suck, you suck. It's your fault. Run for office. <laughs> Prince so, Shane for president! Ow! <laughs> so, when you go to Congress, you can tell them that what this is called is self-propelling neurotoxicity. <laughs> and here's the deal is, you know, it is chicken or the egg. You can, you can insult one side or the other to start the whole process. And so up on the top left, the, that LPS insulting the microglia, that's the endotoxin from the GI tract. That's the most common way that this is happening. 
but it can be direct neurotoxic insults. It can be mercury. It can be mold toxins. Guess what is a glutamate receptor toxin? Our favorite food additive, glyphosate. Roundup. It's a glutamate excitotoxin. So that can start this process. And that's in everything now. Oh, and we tested our product for glyphosate and there isn't any. Thank God. All right, so this gets all wound up and that's causing the fog, it's causing anxiety, it's causing brain fog in the best situation. It can get much worse than that. And when the brain gets all rattled, the autonomic nervous system gets all rattled. Remember I said that the glutamate receptors are gonna put you in that fight or flight? That's called sympathetic autonomic nervous system tone. So you got yin and yang, you got sympathetic and parasympathetic. Sympathetic would be like a yang active thing, and the parasympathetic is more yin, more calm. Sympathetic is going, doing things. Parasympathetic is rest, digest, repair. When you get this process going on, you get jammed over into sympathetic, and you are just locked there. That was why what I was talking about last night. And we were talking about it at a more spiritual level, at a more human level, at a mind-body connection level. But this is the biochemistry of how that happens. Fortunately for us, CBD stops that. I wouldn't have given you so much bad news, and that was a lot, wasn't it? Yeah. Without having some salvation. So this is really cool. This work came out of Israel from the godfather of all this. Does anyone remember his name? Raphael Meshulam. Listen to the love for that name. Yeah. He's like a hero. So, a lot of people were starting to lecture that you couldn't block neuroinflammation with CBD alone, that you needed THC. And some of the autism doctors were saying that you needed that. And I knew it wasn't true from experience, but I found this paper from Meshulam. And uh, we don't have to go through the technicality of it, but CBD alone was, they would induce neuroinflammation with toxins and then they could block it with CBD. CBD alone, no THC, no other cannabinoids, just CBD. And they showed that it was mediated through the CB2 receptor. The CB2 is the one that's gonna control inflammation and CBD barely binds to it at all. But what binds to those receptors? Endocannabinoids. Yeah. Anandamide and two arachidonoglycerol. So it showed conclusively that CBD's effects of bringing up the endocannabinoids and potentiating the receptor was doing all the work that we thought was done by THC for stopping inflammation. That's super important for us. So all those guys in California, they go, it has to come from cannabis. Hemp doesn't work. You need THC. Other one, cannabidiol and other cannabinoids reduce micro, microglial activation and the relevance to Alzheimer's. So microglial activation over on the left. Pacify those little creatures so they don't get all pissed off and start their war. Cannabidiol in vivo blunts beta amyloid induced neuroinflammation by suppressing the release 
of those pro-inflammatory cytokines. So most of these papers are on it blocking or on it pacifying the microglia and stopping that cascade. Uh, this is the one on glyphosate as a glutamate cytotoxin. And, oh, I don't have the other one in there, sorry. It was on CBD acting on a glutamate side. All right, so remember now. Can you go back that, that, one? That was in the research paper. We're back, we're back. I went backward. On the left, you got the microglia. On the right, you have the glutamate. CBD pacifies or deactivates the microglia and it also stabilizes the glutamate receptors. It's working on both sides of it. And then the next section that we'll talk about is how it turns up the good genes and blocks the pro-inflammatory genes. All right? So all that is gonna help seal the blood-brain barrier back up, create stability, and create autonomic balance and let you get back to healing. So most of my lecturing in the first couple of years focused on detoxification. And in detoxification, there was this master switch called NRF2 that turns up all the good players at once, all the things that we need for effective detoxification, all the things that we need for good control of the cellular environment. And in this system, I know that's a little hard to see, but the circle in the middle represents the nucleus. And outside the nucleus in the cytosol is a pair of proteins called KEEP1 and NRF2. We tend to call it NRF2. And KEEP1, even though it's not spelled right for doing it, keeps the NRF2 from going into the nucleus. And then certain things tag that pair and release NRF2 to go into the nucleus. And when it goes in there, it stimulates transcription. Remember I said in the nucleus you have the library of all the possibilities. Those are your genes. Transcription is to take those genes, copy the code, and then take it out for translation, which is at the ribosome where you make the protein. So if the gene codes to make glutathione, our friend, the RNA will read the recipe and take it out to the enzymes that will synthesize the glutathione. So the genes have these addresses, these common sort of common markers called promoter regions. And there's a promoter region called the antioxidant response element. So often you'll see NRF2 slash ARE, antioxidant response element. So when NRF2 goes into the nucleus, all the genes that have these locators called antioxidant response element will be transcribed and the proteins that they code for will go be made. So it's called the antioxidant response element. It responds to a need for antioxidants. It's responding to cellular stress. But there are certain plant compounds that can turn it on and send it into action. And CBD is one of those. Thankfully, because it gives rise to such papers like this. Cannab cannabidiol protects liver from binge alcohol induced steatosis. Thank God. <laughs> Transdermal delivery of cannabidiol attenuates binge alcohol induced neurodegeneration. So these are some of the papers that were famous in the beginning. You know, everybody talked about alcohol protection and, and, and cancer. And the alcohol protection was because of this induction of these, what, what I refer to as chemoprotective genes. Genes that protect us from bad chemicals, from toxins. 
All right, so now we're gonna look at a paper that examines CBD versus THC and its effect on genes. So we just described, we're looking for transcription of genes. What are we gonna turn up? What are we gonna turn down? And things that really profoundly affect your health either have gene-based mechanisms or receptor-based mechanisms. So he said for the receptors, CBD is turning up the endocannabinoids that hit the receptors. But CBD directly acts on the gene sets. And what you'll see here Let me look at it over here again. Ah, there we go. If you go to the top left, those circles, the overlapping circles, those are the number of genes downregulated by CBD, 537, versus on the right, THC, 29. That's it. Yay for CBD. Upregulated genes, CBD, 658, THC, what does that say, 36. You can see that CBD doesn't save your eyesight, for me at least. So you got five, 600 genes going up and five, 600 going down. This is making a big impact. THC doesn't move genes, it just hits receptors. CBD is the one that moves the gene sets. The gene sets that it's moving, I know you can't read those, but those are all glutathione genes, glutathione synthesis, glutathione as transrace. That's the enzyme that uses glutathione to detoxify metals, mold toxins, pesticides, herbicides. It transfers glutathione onto it. So the way detox works in the body, you'll have glutathione and a couple other molecules in your cell, and then you'll have what are called transferases. These are linking enzymes that link the glutathione, or if it's using glucuronic acid, it's a glucuronic acid transferase. It links those things that we make onto toxins, and it makes them water soluble, and it gives them a distinct shape and charge so that they can be recognized by a transport system. It's a transport system that takes that conjugate, toxin conjugate from the cell, transports it out, into the extracellular fluid. I love the extracellular matrix. Somebody made me a t-shirt. I gotta show it. So moves it from the cell out into the, into the matrix, the lymph and then the blood. From the blood, another transporter pulls it into the liver and another one dumps it out through the bile flow. Or in the kidneys, transporters pulling from the blood out through the proximal tubules and into the urine flow. All these genes can be brought up at once. And there's different things that we can do to support them when we make a combined and balanced detox system. That's why I said if you're having detox reactions, you'll need some bitters and some charcoal clay caps, and that'll settle everything down. So all these different genes are brought up and increased in number, well, the proteins are increased in number by CBD. And these are the ones that are turned down, and these are very, when these genes get triggered, it's supposed to mean that the body is really in trouble, and it needs to really try to kill something before it's killed by it. And it's a really reckless runaway inflammation. But it can be triggered by mistake, by endotoxin, lipopolysaccharide, that stuff coming out of the leaky gut. And this paper, remember I said that'll activate the neuroinflammation. This paper was done, you'll see at the bottom, on microglial cells, and it, they did that. They did endotoxin-based activation of it, and they saw that CBD blocks the activation by endotoxin Woo. because of these gene sets that it turns up and turns down and because of its interaction with the endocannabinoids and the CB2 receptor. 
That is a beautiful, whole, complete mechanism using receptors and genes to orchestrate this response to a strong inflammatory threat and bring you back to a sane brain. Uh, and these are just more slides. We can blow through those. It was, these are slides showing that endotoxin, when it gets into the system, takes toxins that are already bad and multiplies their damage. Synergistically toxic. This is damage to kidneys by mercury, which mercury does damage the kidneys. But in the presence of endotoxin, the lipopolysaccharide from the infections in leaky gut, the damage is eightfold stronger. That's bad. This is why, this is one of, I don't know why we have so much leaky gut now. Glyphosate is thought to be part of that. But that flow of endotoxin in is making everything exponentially worse. And CBD is blocking that exponential increase in toxicity. Can you see now how deeply important this is as a supplement? It ain't easy to be alive. We need help. All right, so just to summarize now, the CBD stabilizes the microglia. Those are those immune cells that get out of hand in the brain. It stabilizes the NMDA or glutamate receptors. That's the fight or flight hypersympathetic activity. It downregulates the pro-inflammatory response and upregulates the antioxidant detoxification, anti-inflammatory response. And it does this through a combination of receptor mediated by modulating the cannabinoid receptors and increasing the endocannabinoids, doing that in concert with bringing up and bringing down certain gene sets. Thus, you have a great basis for taking care of the brain and doing a good whole neuro and body detox. You can combine with things like activated B complex, glutathione, bitters, and charcoal clay combinations. And we'll try to get you a fantastic product set for that yourself. Let's hope Paul agrees with me. All right, thank you all very much. It's been